the Director of Engineering and Customer Relations for the Electronics Division of the Ryan Aeronautical Company, Mr. Owen Olds. It is my pleasure to present to you the most advanced and revolutionary proven means of aerial navigation yet devised. The navigational equipment and techniques you are about to see are the result of many years of carefully planned research, development, and flight testing by the Navy, the Army, and the Ryan Company. These equipments and techniques are considered to be of far-reaching significance to our national security and our individual safety. Late in 1955, a Lockheed P-2V Neptune, equipped with a revolutionary new means of aerial navigation, prepared for flight from San Diego, California, to the Naval Air Station at Key West, Florida. to try out this new navigational equipment, the aircraft's navigator cranked in the coordinates of the point of departure and the desired ground track. He then pushed the start button and sat back to observe. Throughout the flight, the equipment automatically and continuously displayed ground speed, drift angle, ground track, also ground miles, aircraft latitude, and aircraft longitude. The navigational information for this flight was provided accurately without the aid of ground facilities, without regard to weather conditions, without celestial references, without reference to airspeed, and without knowledge of the speed or direction of the wind. In this flight from San Diego to Key West, Florida, the aircraft arrived at its destination with a navigational error of less than 1% of the total distance traveled. I'm Art Ballinger, speaking for the Ryan Aeronautical Company and presenting to you the story of Ryan C.W. Doppler Navigational Equipment. This presentation will include an outline of the operational requirements for aerial navigation versus the limitations of navigational techniques available prior to the advent of Doppler navigation. It will also cover the basic technology of Doppler navigation, the common characteristics of the Ryan C.W. Doppler navigators, the unique characteristics of various specific equipment, and it will show a few of the many important applications of the CW Doppler navigators. The first of the CW Doppler family, the APN67, is a complete integrated automatic navigator which provides ground speed, drift angle, ground position, ground track, and other outputs for autopilot, automatic astro compasses, central gyro reference systems, dead reckoning tracers, and ground-stabilized radar displays. Other Ryan systems, such as the APN-122V and the APN-97, provide only ground speed and drift angle, additional data being generated as desired by tie-in with various navigational computer equipment. These Doppler systems were planned and designed to satisfy diversified requirements, and they employ interchangeable units to the greatest practicable extent. As a result, there is a Doppler navigational set suited to the requirements of almost every aircraft. Present military missions can be performed with degrees of accuracy and automaticity, previously unknown. And new tactics are being born from the imagination of those who have recognized the far-reaching capabilities of Doppler navigational techniques. Accurate navigation is required for flight anywhere over the entire surface of the Earth. In conditions of poor visibility, in high winds, in turbulent flying conditions, over calm seas, and over the roughest sea, over every type of land, including the polar regions. The navigational equipment must have no practical low altitude limit and no practical high altitude limit. It must be adaptable to all speeds, 
from the zero and negative speeds of helicopters and vertical takeoff and landing aircraft to the supersonic speeds of the most modern high-performance aircraft. Now consider the shortcomings of navigational techniques which existed prior to the introduction of Doppler navigation. Celestial navigation requires good visibility and takes time-consuming, intricate navigational computations. Manual dead reckoning is time-consuming, inaccurate, and requires the undivided attention of the navigator. Automatic dead reckoning navigation on the basis of estimated wind and true airspeed data removes some, but not all, of the manual computations and time lags. Furthermore, errors in the airspeed data and the wind estimate cause the automatic dead reckoning system to exhibit large errors. The use of radio navigation demands an extensive network of ground stations. During time of war or emergency, these radio stations undoubtedly would be silenced in both friendly and enemy territories. Navigation by means of radar mapping is obviously impracticable over most of the Earth's surface. None of the foregoing techniques are sufficiently accurate or automatic to meet the exacting requirements of modern aeronautics. At the present state of the art of aerial navigation, these requirements can be met only by using the techniques of Doppler self-contained navigation. The basic principle employed in Doppler navigation is one of measuring the Doppler frequency shift of microwave energy. Continuous wave rather than pulse type techniques are used in Ryan Doppler navigational sets in order to maintain high accuracy at all altitudes and to meet the most extreme altitude requirements. Now let us examine this new utilization of the Doppler effect, a natural phenomenon which has been long neglected. To provide a connection to the ground, the microwave energy generated by the CW Doppler set is concentrated into narrow beams of radiation. A portion of the energy is transmitted along each beam at frequency FT. Energy is reflected back into the antenna at a frequency FR. The reflection of energy results from the dispersion of the incident energy caused by the roughness of the Earth's surface. With beams directed aft, the frequency FR of the reflected energy is lower than the frequency of transmission because of the component of the aircraft's speed away from the ground along the direction of the beam. The difference in frequency is proportional to the component of aircraft speed along the beam axis. The higher the aircraft speed, the larger the frequency difference. This frequency shift phenomenon, known generally as the Doppler effect, is the basic principle used in Doppler ground velocity sets to measure the speed of an aircraft in flight. With one microwave beam, only one component of the aircraft speed can be measured. However, with two beams of radiation and barometric altitude data, it is possible to compute the aircraft's heading speed, VH, drift speed, VD, ground speed, VG, and drift angle, delta. Additional beams can be added to meet the special requirements of helicopters and airships. It is the application that determines the number of beams required. The ground velocity data obtained with the Doppler set is the basic output from which other vital navigational data is generated. It can be directly integrated to provide ground miles, or it may be used in a navigational computer along with true heading information for the determination of the north, south, and east-west components of the aircraft's velocity. Then, if desired, the north, south, and east-west speed data can be automatically integrated to obtain the north-south and east-west distances traveled, which, in turn, can be converted to the latitude and longitude coordinates of the aircraft's present position. Knowing the present position and the desired destination, the best course and shortest distance to that destination can be automatically computed and displayed. To meet the requirements of certain applications, the ground speed, VG, may be combined with true airspeed, TAS, for automatic determination of the wind speed, VW, and the wind heading, WH. Accordingly, Doppler navigational sets 
which provide navigation without reference to wind data, actually permit the automatic computation and display of the wind speed and wind direction. Now, let us look at some of the equipment developed to meet the needs of modern aerial navigation. Before looking at specific sets, however, let's examine certain characteristics which are common to every Doppler navigational set developed by Ryan. Continuous wave energy is generated by a tiny, extremely rugged and highly stable Klystron oscillator. The frequency of its output is in the interference-free band centered at 13,300 megacycles. The Klystron, which is usually located between two microwave crystal mixers, not only serves as a rugged microwave transmitter, but it also acts as a local oscillator, coupling small portions of its power into each crystal mixer. The crystal mixers combine the small portions of reference energy from the Klystron with the ground return energy and produce two signals, or Doppler frequencies proportional to the components of the aircraft's velocity along the directions of the two beams of the antenna system. Now you begin to see the simplicity of the CW concept. There is no need for IF amplifiers, local oscillators, or automatic frequency control circuits. The Klystron and the crystal mixers are mounted on a featherweight but rugged antenna of very unique concept and design. This antenna unit features virtually 100% reliability, and there are no adjustments or moving parts. Further, it requires virtually no maintenance. The microwave plumbing is sealed in place within a septum which separates the transmitting and receiving halves of the antenna. Note the twin feeds used to provide the two microwave beams associated with each reflecting surface. There are two feeds for transmission and two for reception. The antenna is sealed by integral radome sections. One section serves as a window for the outgoing energy, and the other section serves as a window for the ground return. The antenna has an integral shroud rigidly connecting its reflecting surfaces with the radome sections. This shroud is trimmed to match the contour of the aircraft. All Ryan antenna systems feature simplicity, high reliability, and adaptability to the space available in various types of aircraft. In particular, note how the antenna shroud permits rigid flush mounting. No aerodynamic drag is introduced. Another characteristic of Ryan CW Doppler sets is the orderly arrangement of parts within functionally organized plug-in subassemblies. These subassemblies feature advanced etched circuitry and pictorial identification of parts. Etched circuitry is also used for the interconnection of subassemblies. Troublesome interconnecting cables are minimized. This unit typifies the orderliness of the design concept used by Ryan. The equipments are designed for rapid maintenance. Much design effort has been expended to minimize the training requirements and to achieve ease of operation. Now for a look at specific equipment. This is the APN67. It is a completely integrated navigational system which is particularly suited to such aircraft as the Lockheed WV-2 used for airborne early warning. An equipment of even greater significance is the APN-122V. The APN-122V comprises the Doppler portion of the APN-67, tied in with an advanced ground speed computer with extended attitude coverage to provide a lightweight general purpose ground velocity indicator. The V in the designator APN-122V is significant. The V symbolizes versatility. The electrical outputs of the APN-122V are heading velocity, drift velocity, ground speed, and drift angle. The operational and physical characteristics of the APN-122V provide a good feel for the nature of high-performance Doppler navigational sets. The weight of the APN-122V is approximately 125 pounds, as it is used in aircraft operating to an altitude of 70,000 feet. A substantial weight reduction is permitted in aircraft which operate at lower maximum altitudes. 
The volume is approximately two cubic feet, excluding the antenna, which requires separate consideration. The volume of the antenna depends somewhat on the particular installation. Generally, the antenna must be assigned a volume of two cubic feet. The ray dome aperture generally requires approximately three square feet of the underside of the aircraft. The antenna two-way beam width is generally three degrees, although some aircraft are so diminutive that smaller antennas with larger beam width must be used at some sacrifice in navigational accuracy. The transmitter output used in the 70,000 foot system is approximately 15 watts. Less power is used in sets designed for lower maximum altitudes. The nominal transmitter frequency is 13,300 megacycles. This is the approved frequency for Doppler navigational sets. The power consumption of the 70,000 foot system is approximately 600 watts. Lower altitude systems require less power. The ground speed coverage of the APN 122V is 80 to 800 knots. However, other 10 to 1 speed ranges can be provided to meet the needs of either lower speed aircraft or supersonic vehicles. The drift angle coverage is 0 to plus or minus 45 degrees. The altitude coverage of the APN 122V is 0 to 70,000 feet. The APN 122B measures ground speed with an error of less than 1%. Drift angle is measured with an error of less than one half degree. Next, let us examine the units which comprise the APN 122B. The antenna unit of the APN 122B has been described. The Doppler signals from the antenna are fed to an audio amplifier. This amplifier assembly is transistorized to provide high reliability. The signal data converter processes the audio frequency signals from the amplifier assembly, converting them to 400 cycle per second voltages, which are accurately proportional to the components of the aircraft velocity along the axes of the two antenna beams. The signal data converter automatically searches for and acquires the Doppler signals after which it automatically traces the Doppler signals with a very high degree of precision. This is the power supply for the transmitter. It features functional organization, rugged construction, and an extremely stable output voltage having an almost non-existent ripple content. The ground speed computer of the APN 122V uses advanced electrical analog computing techniques. Its computing elements provide accurate ground speed data over a wide range of aircraft attitudes. The visual outputs of the APN 122V are ground speed and drift angle, displayed on a three inch cockpit instrument with integral illumination. Now, a point of special significance is that the APN 122V may be interconnected with other equipment to provide more comprehensive systems suited to an almost unlimited variety of specific missions. For example, the APN 122B has been combined with the ASA 13A Navigation Computer Group to provide a Doppler-driven position computing system. This combination is being used in the Lockheed P2B land-based anti-submarine warfare aircraft. It is also being used in seaplanes such as the Martin P-5M Marlin anti-submarine warfare aircraft, and in anti-submarine hunter-killer work performed by the carrier task force leader, the Grumman S2F tracker. Regarding usage, it is important to note that the combination of the APN 122B and the ASA 13A provides the signals required for accurate stabilization of search radar against the motion of the search aircraft and for accurate control of the stylus of a plotting board. The APN 122V is also associated with development in the digital computing field. For example, it has been combined with the CP209 digital computer to form a vital part of the ASB7 bomb director set used in certain versions of the Douglas A3D Sky Warrior. Now let us see the role played by the APN 122V in fighters and small attack aircraft. 
The APN 122B has been integrated with this recently developed very lightweight navigational computer to provide a featherweight navigational system which is especially applicable to the Douglas A4D Skyhawk and other attack or fighter type aircraft. This particular system is designated the APN-126 radar navigation set. Adaptability to available space in very small high-speed aircraft is demonstrated by this A4D installation. For example, the maximum antenna aperture width available is 7 inches. This unique installation was accomplished by employing separate long, narrow antenna assemblies. The port beam is transmitted through the forward port radome and port beam echo energy received through the aft radome. A light assembly is employed for the starboard beam. The APN-126 units provide the same performance as antennas of single unit construction with equivalent aperture area. Simplified cockpit instrumentation continuously provides visual navigational information which guides the pilot accurately and reliably throughout the flight. Large navigation errors due to errors in estimated wind speed and direction are completely eliminated. From takeoff, the APN-126 radar navigation set is capable of accurately directing light attack aircraft to the target area. it accurately directs the pilot back to base. To continue with this story of adaptability, here is another navigational computer group, the Air Force ASN-7, which can be combined with the APN-122V to provide a system for certain tactical missions. This is but one example of how the Air Force could benefit from the use of the APN-122V and associated equipment. A final word about the APN-122V. The APN-122V is being combined with certain inertial units to provide a Doppler inertial system which is advantageous in aircraft such as the Grumman A2F carrier-based all-weather attack aircraft. Next, let us turn our attention to the Army's requirements for self-contained navigation. The Ryan Electronics Division has developed an integrated self-contained navigational and flight instrumentation system for Army aircraft. Like the APN-67 and the APN-122B, this all-weather set utilizes continuous wave Doppler sensing techniques. Designated the Ryan Model 120, it will play a major role in the Army's Nap of the Earth concept and the other advanced tactics characterizing our modern Army. The Model 120 is a complete integrated navigational system comprising a Doppler set, navigational computers, navigational and flight control displays, a vertical reference, and a heading reference. The Doppler portion of the Model 120 provides ground speed and drift angle and is functionally similar to the APN-122V. The principal differences are that it operates over a lower portion of the speed spectrum and that it utilizes less transmitter power. The Model 120 includes this pictorial display which continuously and automatically shows ground position and ground track. In certain missions, no other display is necessary. A major unit of the Model 120 indicates wind speed, wind direction, and provides counter-type displays of present position and destination. This unit shows ground track, relative bearing to destination, course error, and distance to destination. It shows the pilot the best course and shortest distance to his destination. The basic system is designed for fixed-wing aircraft applications. However, low-speed accessories may be added, as required, to provide for the very low speed and the hovering requirements of helicopters. In rotary wing aircraft, this hovering indicator is provided to display heading speed, drift speed, and vertical speed. The Model 120 provides the Army increased flexibility in combat areas and it eliminates the need for ground radio stations with their attendant cost and vulnerability to attack. 
flight tests have demonstrated an accuracy capability of 1 to 2 percent of the distance traveled. Finally, let's examine what has been done for the Navy's airships and helicopters. This is the APN-97 Doppler navigational set designed for use in helicopters. It utilizes four radar beams, weighs approximately 30 pounds, and operates from zero speed to plus or minus 150 knots. The APN-97 automatically and continuously displays the heading speed, the drift speed, and the vertical speed of the helicopter. It embodies the most advanced transistorization and etched wiring techniques. Outputs are provided for tie-in with automatic stabilization equipment to permit smooth and safe automatic transition from cruise speed to a hovering condition. The APN-97 permits sustained automatic hovering under conditions of poor visibility with better precision than can be accomplished by experienced pilots operating under the best of weather conditions. The APN-97 is a vital link in the Navy's all-weather ASW helicopter instrumentation program. It is in production. An equipment for airship is the APN-125. It is similar to the APN-97, except that it uses larger antennas and higher transmitted power. In the interest of standardization, its components are derived from the APN-97 and the APN-122V. The higher power and larger antennas are required to meet the operational altitude specified for airborne early warning airships. In addition to its applicability to the AEW airships, the APN-125 is also suitable for the anti-submarine warfare missions performed by airships. The initial research which served as the foundation for the present family of versatile CW Doppler automatic navigators, was performed by the Naval Research Laboratory, Washington, D.C. This work, involving major contributions to the field of radar and aerial navigation, began as early as 1933. Ryan's job was to develop and prove equipment meeting the stringent operational and environmental requirements of military aircraft and to produce equipment representing the latest state-of-the-art in manufacturing techniques. With modern aircraft demanding accurate self-contained automatic navigation, it's fortunate indeed that Ryan CW Doppler navigational sets are available. Based on years of experience and thousands of flight hours, these navigational sets provide the most advanced concepts for present-day aerial navigation. Light in weight, accurate, operationally reliable, versatile, and easy to maintain, they also promise to help overcome the new and challenging problems of the space age. You will see these versatile equipment doing their jobs in the study of jet streams, in the setting of speed records, in the recording of the Earth's magnetic field, in new missions over the ends of the Earth. During Army vertical envelopment operations. In hovering operations to catch the lurking enemy below. During extensive anti-submarine operations. in aircraft screening the far perimeters against aggressive danger, in directing aircraft back to base, in low-level tactics, and in vehicles blasting off into the unknown. guided by the eyes of flight.